is now a full-scale civil war. That from the United Nations peacekeeping chief in what appears to be the starkest international assessment of this conflict to date. And it comes as the descent into chaos appears to be intensifying. New reports of children being tortured and killed as government attacks continue. We have a spiraling escalation of violence led by the Assad regime, and they have it in their hands to stop this. Arms that the regime it has are not being used for external defense. They're not being used for external planning. They're being used to kill their own citizens, especially civilians, women and children and men. At the same time, it appears this war could soon take another dramatic turn. We're told the government is now using attack helicopters in addition to tanks, troops, artillery, and mortars. And also, here uh, is this from Syria, where some are suggesting that this is throwing gasoline on what is now an inferno of violence there. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton saying that Russia is continuing to send arms to the Assad regime. We have confronted the Russians about stopping their continued arms shipments to, to Syria. We are concerned about the latest uh, information we have that there are attack helicopters um, on the way from Russia to Syria, which will escalate uh, the conflict quite dramatically. Indeed it would. And that is we get continuing reports of Syria using helicopters to kill their own civilians. Connor Powell is live in our Middle East Bureau. So how is this new weapon situation fueling the violence there, Connor? Well, Martha, new weapons mean that the horrific violence we've seen in Syria already could escalate to new levels. Key Syrian military base in the hands of rebels and a warning to President Bashar al-Assad from the group's leader. Rockets are now directed at the presidential palace. Give up your throne or else, Captain Abdullah Bob says to the camera in this latest video posted to a social media website. Pointing to a surface-to-air missile, he says, we will liberate Damascus in 24 hours. Three soldiers reportedly taken prisoner. Reuters cannot independently verify the content of this video. Or reports rebels seized the base with help from those inside. Their hold on it, however, was short-lived. Rebels looted the installation of machine guns and bullets, but no missiles were fired before the army rained down artillery and forced them out. The action comes amid reports of yet another massacre. This latest one in Al Hafa. Parents in the predominantly Sunni village are in mourning after what locals say has been seven straight days of heavy shelling by government forces. Deborah Gimbera, Reuters. Hello everyone. Today is just another day in hell. So this is GGN. My website is ggnonline.com and YouTube is ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. So enjoy these videos. I Like I've, I've mentioned this plenty of times before, there's good chance I'll just never come back after taking these breaks because I just I just get sick of everything I get sick of doing these videos my wrist is aching in pain every time um, switch over to the, my left hand get fucked with with my internet network right on schedule and um, so yeah um, you know and I just sit here and I just keep saying the same shit same shit same fucking shit which is what the United States the Saudi Arabia and a little Sunni conspiracy they're arming the rebels. They've been arming the rebels. And now you have um, uh, the wicked witch of the West, Hillary Clinton, saying uh, that uh, Russia is arming them the whole time. So it's just flat-out lies. And, uh, you know, putting it around all the propaganda arms of, of Fox and all this other stuff about what? About Russia sending hel attack helicopters. And uh, they're killing uh, women and children. And they're taking them out of incubators like Iraq and... They're using children as human shields, just like they did in Libya. So, and uh, this whole thing with, with uh, these quote Syrian troops that were captured, they're probably not even Syrian troops. Because see, these terrorists have been caught. These terrorists that are funded by the West, getting aided by the West, are doing the same thing that they've been doing here in Syria and in even in Libya as well, uh, with all these um, fake stories about uh, Gaddafi's troops uh, doing the mass raids, and then they find out that it was actually 
the opposition, the rebels, the peaceful activists. Ooh, now they have fucking missiles. They're peaceful activists with missiles. See, guys? And we got to support that because they wanted to... They want democracy like we have in the United States, so we better arm them. Well, they've already been armed, and now they're doing the same thing as they were in Libya, which is what? They're attacking military bases. See, in Libya, though, they actually just said, hey, and they didn't fire on these peaceful activists that were armed and trying to kill them. No, they let them come in the base. They took all their caches of weapons, and they went from town to town after being shipped in from the northeast Libya and armed by the west to uh, basically dismantle Libya. Which they've done successfully. Now they're trying to do that with Syria in the name of humanitarian mission. So, uh, uh, you know, they have all kinds of things ready to go. And uh, when they put out this crap, the lies about killing children and stuff like that, a lot of times it's the actual rebels, these peaceful activists that are just blowing people up. Uh, they don't really care. They're actually using other people as human shields. Uh, they're playing games with journalists um, and they're blaming it on the government. Um, they're dressing these guys up as uh, as government military troops, basically Syrian troops, and they're actually the rebels dressed up in costumes, busting down the doors, doing fake raids, uh, acting as if they're getting buried alive, all of them staged, just like Syrian Danny. You don't see him anymore, right, Zionist Danny? No, because he's been punked. That People find out that that was a lie, too. So we have Syrian rebels get influx of arms with Gulf neighbors, money, U.S. coordination. This is from the Washington Post, so this isn't just some conspiracy site here, guys. Um, it says here, Syrian rebels battling the regime or administration of Assad has begun receiving significantly more and more and better weapons in recent weeks in an effort paid for by the Persian Gulf nations and coordinated in part by the United States. So according to opposition activists and U.S. and foreign officials. So there you go. There you go. And uh, remember I covered this article from LandDestroyerReport.com uh, or whatever it was. And uh, it talked about the Brookings Institute uh, document that actually said what they were going to do. It was a U.S., Saudi, Israel backed with Sunni and Lebanon uh, factions to go in there and get a regime change. And this was all the way back in the day. This was in a 2007-2008 article by Seymour Hersh in the New Yorker saying what they were going to do step by step. And this was on May 15th, that this was in the mainstream article about the West funding the rebels that are carrying out all these atrocities, including the Hulu uh, uh, suicide bomber. Yeah, that was actually uh, Al-Qaeda. Actually, that's the same group that Hillary Clinton actually admitted that the United States and the West created, their own little terrorist organization. And remember that journalist, Colvin, with the eye patch? Yeah, it came to find out that, uh, that the rebels actually actually uh, killed her as well. And remember this article from, uh, what was this, June 1st, U.S. Hawks push for arming Syrian rebels. That's McCain and Liverman said on Thursday it was time to arm the Syrian rebels in the wake of last week's Hula massacre that was carried out al-Qaeda, which is being backed by the same people. So they, remember I said, if you remember that report, they didn't get the memo that they're already arming them. So it was kind of a joke. And then you have arming Syrian rebels, wrong way to go, says NATO's Rasmussen. And he said the same thing for Libya. I, I actually was looking for an article, and I uh, came across him saying the same thing about Libya. So, about not arming the uh, Libyan opposition, which they did. And now it's become a haven for, what, smuggling arms into Syria, along with the terrorists that the West is uh, funding and training as well. Right now they're in Syria training the, quote, peaceful activists, the opposition. So one of the uh, ways into Syria is, of course, the RTP, Rights to Protect, um, basically article or treaty, um, in, in which case, if it's a humanitarian crisis, i.e. there's refugees flooding over the border somewhere, or they put out this crap, such as using children as human shields, um, they could just go in there uh, in the name of um, saving people, right? And they de declare a humanitarian corridor, and then they can have dr drones flying overhead and uh, bombing people with uranium-tipped bombs. But they did the same thing in Libya as well. They had the uranium-tipped bombs and all that, like in uh, Iraq, and and now it's they're pacified. It's a peaceful place. So Gaddafi, the big bad ruler, is gone, and the country's basically fallen apart. NATO concerned at Libya, use of human shields in Misrata. So the same old bullshit from April 6, 2011, about using human shields. So after Gaddafi, Libya splits into desperate militia zones. They should just say smuggling zones, right?
and terrorist haven zones. And you can bet that the West is funding all of this. They're funding all of this to take place so that uh, anyone that supports the old um, system style, uh, basically the Gemma Haria, uh, they're going to go down and they're watching them and they're going to squash any type of um, movement that tries to get rid of this new system, which is a lot like uh, what's going on in Egypt in that, where it's becoming more radical. And that's what they want because it plays into their hands as far as having this radical opposition that they're actually working in tandem for. So it says here, UN adds Syria to list of countries killing children. So Syrian government forces and allied militia have killed, maimed, tortured, and detained children as young as nine years old. No, we're not talking about the United States. We're talking about Syria is on its list of shame. So UN observers in Syria attacked by crowds shot at. So angry crowds blocked UN observers from reaching an embattled rebel-held town in Syria on Tuesday. Well, why would they be doing that? Hurling stones and metal rods at the monitor's vehicles. Remember, I had a picture of what? UN walking uh, shoulder to shoulder with an Al-Qaeda member. That's right. UN walking shoulder to shoulder with an Al-Qaeda member. I've showed it many a times. You go in there and check it out. And you, you can remember, I, don't, I think, hopefully you remember the connection I made between the UN and the violence. As long as the UN's there, the violence will escalate. So these people probably want the United Nations to get out. But this little propaganda piece of crap says what? It's not clear why the crowd wanted to prevent the observers from entering. Hmm, I wonder why. Hmm. So you're going to have to actually think for yourselves instead of having um, the mainstream media and that tell you how to think. Then we have Syrian rebels set trap for British journalists. Says here, Alex Thompson nearly escapes attempt to kill his Channel 4 news team. Clear the rebels deliberately set us up to be shot by the Syrian army. So see, that's what they do. They play little games like this. They probably have little operatives from the West, uh, Israel, Britain, or U.S. in there coordinating this whole uh, shindig. Because remember, and just like in Libya, let's not forget the whole uh, the video of the you know of the killing of Gaddafi. What did we see? Oh, we saw a fully dressed, fully armed NATO troop. But it's all about the propaganda, right? NATO preparing vast disinformation campaign. Member states of the global. Uh, Empire Army, the NATO, are preparing a coup d'etat and a sectarian genocide in Syria. And in a few days, perhaps as early as Friday, June 15th at noon, the Syrians wanting to watch our national TV stations will see them replaced on their screens by TV programs created by the CIA. Studio shot images will show massacres that are blamed on the Syrian government. People demonstrating, ministers, generals resigning from their posts, and Assad fleeing. The rebels gathering in big city centers and a new government stalling itself in the presidential palace, the Free Syrian Army, right? The National Transitional Council. Of course, this is an effort to demoralize the Syrian people without attacking the country illegally. Even the U.S. Army PSYOP officer, Psychological Operation Unit, has been embedded in Al Jazeera, BBC, and France 24. All those channels are having a meeting it says here, a storytelling script is being devised by Ben Rhodes' team at the White House. He is the U.S. Deputy National Security Advisor for Strategic Communication. So like Libya, Al-Qaeda affiliates operating in Syria, says William Hague. Well, I think the head terrorists should know, you know who they're funding, right? And how do they do it? Well, Israel smuggling weapons to Syria through Iraq Kurdistan, says sources. And we have the Israeli Defense Force holding hold simulation of outbreak of first Lebanon war says here the soldiers are training for a return to the Le Lebanese conflict. And how do they know? Well, because they're fomenting it, right? They have the little sunni back factions in there in Lebanon and bringing in weapons. So it's here Israel to evacuate Tel Aviv in event of missile attack. As Russia's Lavrov says, Russia does not sell combat helicopters to Syria. According to him, they were finishing the fulfillment of contracts that were signed and paid for a long time ago. It says here, Russia is supposed to, and it's coming from Rothschild's Reuters, so take that with a grain of salt. Russia prepares for war in Syria, says army units. And a representative said that uh, reaction forces in Syria is theoretically possible. Russia test fires a new ICBM hitting its target in Central Asia. Russia says the Anand plan is the only chance for peace, but it's being stalled by intervention supporters. He said the foreign players support armed groups of the opposition and at the same time demand that the international community take decisive steps to change the regime in Syria. He also said Russia has enough evidence about arms being supplied to the Syrian opposition. UN confirms arms smuggling between Lebanon and Syria. 
And as Obama speeds up no-fly zone preparations in Syria, remember this drill that they just had in Jordan. A massive show of force near the Syrian border. This is GGN. Thank you.